Bienvenidos a Cafecito with Rosie on Air. My name is Rosie Paulson and I'm the owner of Rosie Paulson Enterprises, where I help, I passionately help business owners succeed. My brand promise, knowledge, connection, success. I bring friends into my show that can share their stories of who they are, what inspired them, and how they help the community. Today, I am honored to bring on the show a commercial filmmaker helping business get from their current situation to their desired situation by growing engagement and monetizing their audience. He was born in Bogota, Colombia, and we did the Cafecito with Rosie on TV together. He was the producer of my show, and his name is Sergio Banegas. Hi, Sergio. How are you? Sergio, how are you? Hi, Rosie. Thank you for having me. Good, and you? Good, good. Thank you. This is one of my um, uh, inspiring moments when I can showcase you, because I know you and I have worked professionally uh, with many, with, with that project that, that was just about seven months of us practically working every single day trying to, uh, you, you know, achieving the, the four shows that we produce. And I am so happy that I'm able to just bring you in and give you the opportunity of people getting to know who you are, to like you and trust you as much as I do. And that way they can do business with you and you can be po become a profitable and thriving business owners. The opportunity today is to get to know who Sergio is, uh, who you are, your family, where you, you come originally, um, are you bilingual? What's Sergio's story? Well, do not make it too long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the introduction. Yes, um, I moved here when I was young from Colombia, and I didn't start doing anything with video or anything that has to do with uh, filmmaking. I, I went straight into computers, uh, had one degree in finance and one degree in, in uh, system engineer. And I did that for a long time, but I just, I got, I grew tired of it. And behind the scenes, my passion was something else like, you know, f taking pictures and, and creating video family uh, trip videos or uh, any, any little thing that had to do with uh, creating cool stuff and everybody always told me hey that was pretty cool you you put me in tears i did some cool videos for some friends but then that little by little started to be more of my of my passion and and i grew tired of the uh behind the the, the desk and a computer and and the nine to five so I started Eagle Fly Media in conjunction with my brother. He was my uh, associate because he he is the uh, creative part when it comes to digital design and and drawing. He's really good with colors and all that. And together we we started our Eagle Fly Media adventure. It's been four years. Uh, it's been hard because it's starting from scratch, um, getting my equipment, learning more every day um contacting new customers and then we you and i met that was a really really awesome experience working with the local network telemundo and producing this show and really good quality and learning the the behind the scenes and how to deal with uh, their um, production department and now it's just another side to my another another coin in my uh piggy bank right. that I'm uh, collecting for 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 knowledge and in future adventures yeah so you're married to an Ecuadorian how long have you been married uh 17 years and you have how many children two two kids 13 their oldest is 13 and the youngest is 10 yes yes and so um what is your favorite Ecuadorian food Hmm. The, it, I don't know how you call that in English. It's the uh, the part of the stomach. <laughs> no, guatita, guatita. Yeah, that, that. Uh, right, right. But it has to be that specially. So the, her mom, her mom makes it really good. Yes, yes. I was actually. Uh, uh, that's one of the things that that we have to eat it 
you know, um, settle uh, because it's really bad, but it's so good when you eat it, right? It's so good. I so know. my mom makes it. You have to clean it out really good. Uh, I've yes. never done it, but I know that's one of my favorite dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes, yes. Um, so a, one of the things that that uh, you that I admire from you a lot is that at the very beginning when you were learning, uh, you gave a lot of your time. But you're now one of the few professionals in the area that knows exactly what is worth, and you're not settled for anything less. And I know that's hard, and you had had to walk away from business because of that. But um, I think that's one of the things that if you can share how did that, did you come to that conclusion and how do you stay focused on that? Because the reality is you already, and I heard this from you before, I already gave my time and my contribution. Now I deserve, I know what I deserve and I'm not going to settle for less. How do you come out to that conclusion? Well, I think it's a mindset and appreciating and valuing yourself. Um, mm -hmm. At the beginning, obviously, I, I, I was learning um, just for the opportunity for me to show what I could do. I gave my time. And, but after a while and after accepting comments from people telling me, yes, your, your job, your work is good. Your work is good. And hearing it from so many and uh, like, for instance, from you, from other companies, um, I started to believe in myself, and then I compare myself to other um, similar industries and similar companies and what they were uh, asking for their time and their production. And I just said, well, this is it's my job is either similar or better. Why wouldn't I be why would I be settling, settling for less? So that's when I tried to like, my mindset is, no, this is me. This is my price. And I do believe in myself. So when you hire me, I'm going to get my 150%. So why would I settle for, for low, for cheap? Right. And yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I believe a lot of business owners get so desperate. They get into that that thing that they're so desperate because they're looking at making $500 like for tomorrow that they... Uh, they, they acquired this client that ended up costing them $1,500. So did you really make money by by settling for that out of desperation for these clients? It's one of the things that I also share with my business owners. The moment that you know who you are and what your your time is worth, you don't need to settle. And it, it'll be easier to walk away from deals because at the end of the day, if you take on that deal, you might be losing uh, the time for a bigger deal that is willing to pay you what you're worth and more because they appreciate uh, your talent, right? Because this is yes. you're a professional, it's a talent. People hire you because you are the best at what you're doing. Um, business owners don't have to be everything. And that is, uh, I think, one of the... the uh, the things that I admire uh, out of your company. You also grew the last quarter of, I believe the last quarter, the last six months during pandemic too, because you actually now have somebody working for you, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it was it was a blessing and a, not, I don't want to say curse, but a blessing that in that pandemic happened because I took time for my for myself to invest in knowledge mm -hmm. and that knowledge grew into a different opportunity and better opportunity and then the company just exploded after that yes so tell me like what is your perfect client who who will be the person that can use your services my perfect client is uh at this point is somebody that is it's not just a startup mm -hmm. um what we're doing right now is part of um, not just the video of filmmaking, but also bringing ROI, a return mm -hmm. on their investment. So if they hire my company for a production, it's not just me here. Here's the video. What are you going to do with it? Uh, if they don't know, well, my company also brings their return. Well, we're going to put it on this media or this media and we do the whole package. So somebody that is starting up, and has no idea how to present themselves in the media 
like out there in social media like like Facebook, Google, things like that. We come up with a whole solution and we we have everything from A to Z. We'll create the production and then we create the campaign to make a return or conversion in that production and then bring customers to their door. So it's it's like in between a startup and somebody that already has a budget for marketing. Mm -hmm. So they already know that uh, investing in marketing, it's going to return, uh, give them a return on their investment. And, and I believe many businesses had to pivot during pandemic on a lot of their social media outlets. Uh, how did that created that, that probably created a humongous opportunity for your company and that's what you say you exploded right yes yes that's that's that was the pit point right there when not just going after a well, content just one day off um, work it was a con retainer and here is the solution and what are we going to do for the next six months so it became a contract in a uh, um, somebody uh, retaining a customer for longer t periods mm -hmm. just by pivoting into social media platforms. Yeah, because see, one of the things that I share in my book is the ACDCs of, uh, of pivoting and is um, adapt, create, develop, and then collaborate. And I believe I, I came out with that uh, acronym and that part of my pivoting working with you because again, now I'm at the house, there's nothing I can do. I can't go out there. Um, so you and I work together on, on Scott, my husband will record the stuff. I, I was in the living room, then I send you the video and then you did the editing, the picture, the everything, and then you put it together and then um, uh, you were able to, we were able to put it in all the social media platforms, but we, we also learned through this and we adapted and that's where I came out with the, uh, uh, uh adapt, create, uh, uh, no, adapt, develop, create and collaborate. And that was actually the experience with you. And I really appreciate that. Did, um, uh, do you feel also that the business that have adapted are the ones that they're probably going to survive and perhaps the ones that they have not uh, we might not see them here for too often yes too I believe long. so I believe so and by the experience by for instance with you doing that and you know editing your your content and put it in on social media also when you say adapt um, in here in my company I'm using other tools, I'm outsourcing, so, and everything is uh, online. So like, for instance, my good editor mm -hmm. is, she's from Belarus next to Russia. And all we have to do is just upload everything into our Dropbox. And she downloads it, creates the story, brings it back to us, and it's just perfect. And then I don't have to worry about that. I, it, it's just another uh, weight off my shoulders and it's all online. And like, she doesn't need to be here in my office. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the things that uh, that quarantine did for me or the pandemic did for me because, uh, you know, and, and you know this very well from our show and working together, when you come to Tampa, when you move to Tampa, there's three names that usually people get, and one of those names is my name, like for the people that you need to know in Tampa. Well, I was very well known in Tampa, but now I can't go out there. So how I'm going to do this, I started by going online actually it opened up for the international market and that's when i really decided to go into the book and write my book in spanish because i've always wanted to give back to my country right ecuador but i always thought about the travel the cause the language but after pandemic that thing that, that barrier was completely annihilated I, I, I'm taken away from it because i can do it virtually you know, and I'm right. like thinking, wow, so you, look, you are working with somebody in Belgium. I mean, how amazing um, of this technology where you're able to bring your product, make it better and work with people's internet, with other people internationally. It's, right. uh, it's again, like you say, don't want to give a curse, but it was an opportunity to learn perhaps something that you would not have tried it if you did not have to be forced to it, right? Yes, yes, you're right. Good, good, good. Now, um, 
I know one of the things that I like to ask people is if you can share a challenge that you are faced that you were faced with.